original investigators believe he murdered her. They yeah. just can't prove it. It's my first initial call to the private investigator working on my dad's case. My wife jumps up from the table and says, Oh my God, who is this man coming in the backyard? I divorced him because I couldn't trust him at all. He lied to me at the very beginning. He was living two separate lives. In the water about 30 yards away, and identified it as it was a person. Our first trip down to Florida provided us with a lot more information than I think we anticipated. We had originally gone down there as more of a fact-finding mission just to make sure we felt good about taking on this case and to talk to the investigators working on the case. We did invite my mother Annie to come along with us and the reason I kind of wanted to do that is because obviously she's extremely important to me and I wanted to make sure she knew what we were doing. So she's not really investigating with us. She just really had wanted to come down and kind of see for herself some of the information we were uncovering. One of the things we had been nervous about when we first went down to Florida is that Chris would find out that we were there. And the reason we didn't want this to happen yet was because we wanted to have a chance to kind of look at the information to make sure that we were going to continue with this series. Of course, after we did decide to continue, we did reach out to him and he has not responded. Of course, we would love to chat with him also. But at this point, so early on in our looking into the case, we really wanted to make sure we had our ducks in a row before we started asking him specific questions. Of course, though, when you're talking to family and friends of the deceased, the word got to him pretty quickly that Annie was in town. Okay, so I got a text from my dad, and then it says, Hey, Brianna, I haven't heard from you in a bit. I know that you and Annie, who is here, from what I understand, are cooking up a little commemorative thing on Carolyn. I talked to both Austin and Jenny and they want no part of it. They both told me that they are in a place of healing and they are in a really good place right now. I think the thought of it is super sweet. Maybe later on in life they would appreciate something like that. It's been 527 days. I think they need to heal. We all do. I think it's funny that he says it's been 500. Yeah, it's so specific. <laughs> is that immediately like, you should be beyond this. Why are you not? And now it's suddenly something that's wrong with you as opposed to something that's like, this is like a, a serious conversation. So. Well, what I'm surprised about is who is he trying to protect? Why isn't he asking us more about that he's calling a commemorative to Carolyn? Why isn't he offering to help to commemorate Carolyn? So one of the people we really wanted to interview as soon as we got down to Florida was Mike, Carolyn's ex-husband. And the reason for this is because we felt he could fill in so much background about who she was. He was a little bit hesitant because he did know we were making an investigative documentary. So we just agreed that we would leave his comments to being memories about Carolyn and some of the stuff he was comfortable talking about with the boat and when they went and got the boat. And so we've definitely tried to honor that the best we can and you see that in episode six. So I think because of that, there came some confusion about what he had told other people he was filming for, even though he was filming for the memorial portion of our documentary series, it was always and very well stated that it was part of an investigative documentary. So we have included that in there, but he doesn't and didn't at that time have an opinion about the case. And so we tried to honor that by keeping those comments relegated to just being in memory of Carolyn. And I mean, obviously, I think we know from Mike that that's what he said, decided to say to Chris because he didn't want to lie to him per se and not say you weren't here, but at the same time. So he said commemorative, even though obviously I explained to him that it was an investigative documentary. I hate the part the most that Chris says it's 500 and some days since Carolyn's death, but how long did he wait to buy a house with another woman in Wisconsin? Like he's such a hypocrite, like making a, com if he actually thought we were making a commemorative video, making a commemorative video a year and a half after someone's passing is somehow negative. Yet dating a woman and buying a house with her two months after your wife dies is somehow acceptable. 
yeah. and posting pictures publicly, making it a big thing. It's not even like it was happening, but it's like, hey, world, here it is. You might not be a part of it or say, what exactly is this? He didn't ask right. for details on it, nor did he say, I'd love to sit and be a part of it or whatever. It sounds very or, sweet. Or, yeah, can you, you call know? me? I'd like to hear what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, it's nothing like that. It's just now, all of a sudden, he's dad of the year. Yeah. I love, too, how he's, like, trying to protect, like, Austin and Jenny. Doesn't like, seem like he's been trying to protect them. No. At any point in this. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, especially because at that six-month point, he wrote them a letter to tell them how he was doing. He says, hey, kiddos, I hope you're all doing well. I miss you all terribly, and I hope you all know this. Annie told me that I have to tell you guys this, and rather than telling each of you individually, I'm telling you this way. 205 days ago was hard, so hard for all of us. I have been essentially crushed, absolutely haunted since then. And in the letter, he told them and sent a picture of his new girlfriend. When trying to iron out this timeline, one thing that we were able to do was get a hold of a photo that he sent the kids when he wrote a letter to them, and we were able to check the metadata on that photo. Unfortunately, in the last episode, I had mentioned that the photo had been taken four months after Carolyn had passed away. It's actually five to six months after Carolyn passed away. We were able to track the metadata, as you can see. So I just wanted to apologize that I did incorrectly state that in the last episode. It was five to six months after Carolyn passed away, not four months like I had said. The doctor also told me that the things I am experiencing may be my new normal. Only time will tell. Only recently have I started to feel a bit better. I have been dating only one person. I don't know if you guys want to hear that, but it is what it is. She makes me feel better and not so alone. She is almost 39 and has three kids. She has her own house in Mobile but her kids and her stay with me almost constantly. It keeps my mind occupied. I hope you kids are okay with everything. If I'm weird on, we're just sitting on the phone, it's because I'm trying to deal with things. Right, right. Like that's, that's a six month point. Like, the, and that's fine. Like, it's one thing to start dating again, but it's another thing. Send it to your four kids, you know, and move someone into a house with you and sell all her stuff and give away photos. What was a box of pictures of you and Sheldon? Yeah. Yeah, like give away a box of photos. One thing that really disturbed me was at the end of the interview with Mike, Carolyn's ex-husband, he mentioned that Chris had dropped off a box of photos over to his house that he didn't want anymore. Those photos were mostly photos of Bree and Sheldon. And what makes this so odd is that Mike has no biological relation to Bree or Sheldon and never acted as a father to them. Bree and Sheldon are Chris's biological children, and then they marry, and then Chris married Carolyn. So Mike is the father of Jenny and Austin, who are Bree and Sheldon's step siblings. So obviously that's still a close relationship. So don't get me wrong. And Mike and Carolyn were friends, so I can see that they might all be kind of considered family. I just think it's really strange to drop off a box of photos of your biological children to your wife's ex-husband's house. Give them away to Carolyn's ex-husband to store at his house. Yeah, yeah, like why wouldn't you store those at your house? Or give them to your children. Or give them to the kids, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) or give them to the kids. Hey, here's, you know, something to look back on over the years. Plus the whole text is just kind of a passive way of stomping on it all. Yeah. Trying to put an end to it, saying, hey, I don't agree, they don't agree, there's no reason to be doing this. People are trying to heal here, hoping or saying this shouldn't be going on. And no concern for Brie. Are you making this for yourself? Is this going to bring you closure? Mm-hmm. Uh, how are you doing? Like, there's no indication that he gives a shit how her feelings yeah. are. What upsets me about this is his lack of compassion for the children in this family. They have just lost their mom, and he has shown them no consideration when it's come to flaunting other relationships that he started immediately after Carol and passing in front of them which I'm not making a judgment call. People should move on when they feel like it's okay to move on. But really that juxtaposed to Brie making a commemorative video about her mother is really inappropriate when that could be a healing and helpful thing instead of some of the things Chris has done. It was different with Carolyn. What was the first time you saw Chris after the incident happened that night? I saw him at the uh, hospital. Was Was that when I was there? Yeah. Was that the same night or after? It was the day they found Carolyn. Okay, so it was the day after. What would you say his state was? Like, how did he look? Or what you remember? It's 
it's kind of hard to say because because it hadn't you know things and facts hadn't started accumulating in my mind yet I, I had an unbelievable sympathy for him and he was crying and sobbing and hugging me and that's when he was telling me you know how he swam with her and all that and uh being in shock myself, I really didn't think much of anything. I didn't. If the truth were known. The day she found her that night. I sat in my bedroom with a pistol in my hand. Because I didn't want to be without her. But it hit me if I did that, I would never be with her again. I am kind of a one on one faith, me and God. I don't go to church, I don't believe in churches. And uh, my motorcycles are my church. But I wanted to be with her so bad. If she wasn't here, I didn't want to be here. And I didn't see that kind of grief in that bastard. I saw him wanting to be more the center of attention. It wasn't about Carolyn, it was about the widower. When we had a celebration of life down here, everybody came in, he took into a bedroom privately. Told the stories about what had happened. And that's when everybody was saying, he take you in there? And I said, no, why? And they tell me what he had told them, and that's where all the stories, you know, the that's other two yeah. different stories, not counting the one Jason told me, the people from California. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing that stopped me that night was <laughs> she wouldn't have wanted that. Yeah. Mm -mm. What do you think she would want for you? Keep living. Go on what time I got left. Even though she had planned on being with me during that time. She wanted me to be happy. And that's something I'll never truly be again. Did he ever tell you what the ramifications of him being in the hospital were because he was in the water for so long? Oh, he said he had water in his lungs. I think a lot of thought went into it. Because mm -hmm. you can say anything you want to him, negative or positive, whatever, but he ain't stupid. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with that. When you guys... He's just stupid thinking he could fool me. Mm -hmm. When you guys went out on the boat on other days, did people go swimming off the boat? No. No. No, no. We I only went with them one other time. And that was when my son from Colorado was here, and we just went and found a place on the bay and cooked out. And kids waded in the water, and the rest of us just sat and talked. You know, there was no drinking. So I don't know if that was something they did every time. Oh, okay. What was your interpretation of how he went about? with her stuff after she passed. I thought part of it was guilt and that uh, he was trying to solve his guilt by getting rid of everything that was Carolyn, including the house. She just remodeled her kitchen and done an unbelievable job on Anything was Carolyn he got rid of. The bike she rode most of the time, I bought it. He was absolutely focused on anything that meant Carolyn or anything it meant to her to get rid of it. And how quickly would you say you saw that happen? Fast. 
uh, less than six months. Would you say everything was basically gone in six months of her? Not yeah, I, uh, that and the house was sold probably by then. Uh, the boat was gone within 10 days. So we had it up here at Keith's house and it sold in, I guess, 10 days. With the intensity of getting rid of everything that was Carolyn, yeah, it was, it was pretty damn fast. Did you know that he was going to be moving to Wisconsin at one point? I, I, that he had bought a house in Wisconsin? Yeah, because he had told me he was wanting to be closer to his family. And then he messed up and showed a picture of the girl he was up there seeing, which favored Carolyn a little bit. She was short, well-built blonde. And uh, didn't hear anything out of that other than all of a sudden the house is gone there and he's got a house over here. And a month later, he's got a family living with him. Did he ever mention that woman's name in Wisconsin? No. We went to the house. So he bought a house up there? What did the person in there look like? I didn't see her, so it was a, through a Nest doorbell. What I got that they bought that house together. So I think it's really curious because some of the information we uncovered was that the last time he was ever in Wisconsin was at the end of August in 2018. He never returned. What's curious about that is he closed on the house August 30th. Why would you buy a house in another state and then never return? I also think it's really interesting that we have the photo of Sarah very closely after that. So you wonder if Sarah's pregnancy played in at all with the fact that Chris didn't end up moving to Wisconsin. I mean, did you ever know the, there was a story about him finding a bunch of stuff in Carolyn's saddlebag on her bike that was incriminating to her? No, I didn't say that to me, and there wasn't nothing in there. Rain gear, he, he stuff had, like that. He had told my brother that when he was planning on moving to Wisconsin to be close to his family, which was one brother that lived a long ways away from where he bought the house, that he had found some incriminating stuff in a saddlebag on her bike. That didn't ring true to me at all. Nothing there. I'm sure you were aware that Sarah, the woman he's with now, has a baby. Did you ever think about that at all or have any thoughts on that? So I'd really like to delve into the timeline a little further here. And one thing I find that is extremely curious that we've spoken about since the beginning is that Sarah, the woman that Chris is currently engaged to, had conceived the baby prior to Carolyn passing away. And then the baby came into the world after Carolyn passed away. And I just think that's really interesting to this timeline. Obviously, we don't know whose baby it is yet. I would love information on that. If someone knows for sure, please reach out and let us know. But I do think it's really curious in the timeline, and I think it could play into what might have happened to Carolyn. Yeah, I, my first thought when I said he moved in, the woman had the, you know, the infant at the time. I was thinking it was his. I couldn't prove it, and I don't know if that's what the case right, is. Absolutely. But it seems like if you just had a baby, you wouldn't move in with somebody that supposedly you haven't known that long, and you had a nine-month period of pregnancy, and and that happened pretty quick too. He's yeah, I thought it was his. Was it you or Jenny? He was holding the baby and said, "I feel like this is Carolyn reincarnated." Jenny, I was right there when he said it. Though. It's so insensitive to Jenny. Like, even if he felt that way, like, why would you really? say that to the person's daughter? To your daughter, I mean, well, really. Well, yeah, so, yeah, he didn't want them there. That was uh, complicating his lie. Well, yeah, because I feel like that it means he'll get found out on some lie or something. Like, he's not going to be the god that he appears to that family if his other family I just want to thank everybody for watching. If you haven't watched season one, The Disappearance of Robert B., you should definitely go check that out. We're working really hard on that case and trying to get the authorities to take action on it. So definitely catch up with that one if you can. I also just want to remind everyone to subscribe if you're capable. All the money from subscribers goes right back into trying to solve these cases, so it also goes for a good cause. You get to see the episodes early, you get behind the scenes uncut footage, you get to be part of our private subscriber group, 
and then you get discounts on merchandise. So we definitely appreciate, if you can subscribe, please do. And if not, the show will always be public. We really also want to encourage that people call in tips. We absolutely can keep you anonymous. We do it all the time for people. I, that is not just something I say. Literally, if you call me or if you email me, I will not post any of that until we've spoken and you're okay with it. So if you have information, please do not hesitate to reach out. I will not use your information unless I have your permission. But a lot of times that information just helps us further the investigation. So a lot of times people are siloed and they don't know that their information is valuable. So basically, if you do have information and you want to send it to us privately or anonymously, you can send it to this email address. Like I said, we will not post or use any identifying markers of the information until we've spoken to you. And that's only if you agree. So if you do feel like you have a good piece of information, please feel free to openly talk to us about it. And then we'll talk to you about how we can use that information or what we can do with it. And if it's something we can never talk about or show on the show, but you just want to give us the information, that's fine too. We take anonymity very seriously here. About half the people we talk to, we never showcase on the show or mention that we spoke to. So our investigations go much deeper than what people actually see. So please do not hesitate. We're not going to try to trick you or get you on the show. We will be honest with you and upfront with you and we'll let you know if we want to use any of the information and how we want to use it so then you can decide if you want to be involved in that next piece. You saw what he wanted you to see. I knew for a long time what Chris was. He was a control freak. He was a manipulator and he was good at all of this. He had to be to have his position. You know, at work. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I didn't trust him with nothing. Mm -hmm. Because from one day to the next, you didn't know what persona he would uh, project. Yeah, because it was uh, somebody trying to talk about things that he knew a little bit about, but didn't know a lot about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she made me a better person. The tattoo removed from his arm. What was the story, or what did you hear about that? I heard he took a grinder, an abrasive grinder, and tried to grind it off his arm. I never saw any evidence of it, and I never, you know, when he come up, I didn't see no patches stuff. But then he had sleeves on. Yeah. So I don't really know if he did or not, mm -hmm. but they say he did, and then to me that was just another get rid of Carolyn. No, I, I would never have done that. And anybody that loved a woman had just gone wouldn't have done that. And, and we knew a long time ago that there wasn't any love there from him to her. And while she did love him because they had a, a long history and everything, but she wasn't in love with him. I'm sure that created uh, issues at home. It was your impression that Carolyn was going to leave him by the end of the month and that he was, she was going to tell him. She told him that she and Chris had talked. At the end of May, they were going to separate, and she said, I'll be up here living with Buddy. And, of course, he never let that happen, did he? Within three weeks, she would have been here, and he wouldn't have had any insurance money. He would have had to split the house if they sold it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, if she wanted to, she could get half his 401. And, and like I said, I don't know how many times he told me he couldn't afford to divorce her because he'd lose mm -hmm. too much. What are you losing if only half of it's yours? Right. And, and look how she was with Mike mm -hmm. when they got divorced. He, she took nothing from him. Oh, no, they didn't even have a lawyer. Uh, no, they just she didn't take his retirement or or anything, you know. Was, uh, well, and they, she and she could have. Oh, and I think that shows says so much about her character that they maintained a friendship, and I feel yeah. like both of them were very reasonable. It seems like I mean, divorce is hard no matter what, but to come out of it and still be able to be friends and handle the kids amicably in general, is I think says an amazing thing about someone's character. Yeah. 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 And for me, there's no gray areas. It's right and wrong, life and death. There's no in between in any of it. Exactly what we want is just to find the truth in all of this.
can we take a look at the death certificate that you have? Yeah. If you know where it is. I think it's here. Yeah, it's in one of these. And that was another thing. Why was the death certificate in the paper from Carolyn's bike? Really? With the, the note sticking on there. It? Yeah. That's the note from the insurance people. Returning the death certificate to you. That's the lady from the funeral home? This was in the papers. He gave me the old papers to the bike, and here are the papers from where I bought the bike. Oh, my God. That is so bizarre. Maybe that was a slap in my face. Because it was a shock to me when I saw it. And even the fact that there's a thing on the back that's something about insurance money. Like, are you kidding me? I don't know if this was a mistake or if this was na 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 na. So uh, a lot of uh, bizarre things. You know, if you, I would want to surround myself with this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And and there's an unbelievable amount of stuff in this house that is representative of, of Carolyn in my, my coffee cup. She got me that because when she saw it, said it'll fit Buddy's hand. Put <laughs> the bigger hand. And it's the sawmill, you know. <laughs> Keep calm and eat biscuit. And it, it was thoughtful things like that she was doing constantly. My Saint Christopher I wear. She gave that to me when I was leaving on one of my road trips. Yeah. He hasn't behaved as someone that grieved the loss of a dog. Matter of fact, I think he showed more grieving for Marla, that was one of the dogs, mm -hmm. than he did for Carolyn. I mean, you could see the grief. Yeah. I never saw that. I never saw that in Chris's eyes, and that's why when they wanted me at the funeral home to get up and speak, I couldn't. What did you think of Chris's speech at the fu funeral? I thought it was a joke. So did I. Everything he said, it would start out kind of as a serious note and end up in a joke. I couldn't have got up there and not broke down. No. He never came close. I have just told him what uh, a wonderful human being she was. And I would have told him how she changed my life. I, I may be wrong, but I think I knew her better than anybody. Maybe other than, you know, you kids. And I think, you know, I know part of that was in my sight because I didn't want to lose people. Because, uh, Overseas, I lost 30 percent of my country. We never had, you know, a company supposed to be 120. We never had over 90 men, and we lost 30. And uh, I don't, <clears throat> that's buried so deep, I don't even remember. Comes out at night, though. I wake up in there and I'm stepping right out of the jungle. But I can't, can't remember. She, she was life to me. She was worth every second of thought. And of being with me, she was worth every second. And I tell God every night that I thank him for the blessing of Carolyn. The only way I can truly honor her is to continue. Because she wasn't a quitter. I'd be damned if I will be. And that's why we're here today. None of us are quitter. We're gonna fight. We're gonna fight for her. Because she can't fight for herself now.
No, she can't. But I bet she did. <laughs>